This is Open to Hope Radio, featuring Dr. Gloria Horsley and her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley, coming to you on behalf of the Open to Hope Foundation, dedicated to those who are looking for hope after loss. Now, here's Dr. Gloria. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm Dr. Gloria with my daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. And we are so honored to have the guest on today for the award we're getting. We are receiving the Dr. Marion Sokol Award, and that is who we are having on our show today is Marion Sokol. Dr. Marion Sokol is the executive director of the Children's Bereavement Center of Texas. The center gives both individual and group counseling help, helping nearly 1,000 children. Marion is the co-chair of the Action for Stillbirth Awareness and Prevention Coalition, and we're very honored to have her with us today. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Marion. I am honored and particularly excited about the work you do and the fact that you have been chosen for this award, which I hold near and dear. I'm passionate about all infant survival and also the concept that we really need to deal globally with these issues because there are so many mothers who are pregnant around the world who need um, support during that pregnancy period, but also especially after the loss of a baby. Mm -hmm. So bereavement and healthy babies, all of that to me is very, very important. And with all that, we're going to talk a little bit today about helping children and families deal with loss. And I know you were telling me that you've been running a fabulous camp for kids. A thousand kids you help annually. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yeah, we our community is uh, small but has no lack of... Uh, interest and concern for children. And many years ago, in fact, 19 years ago, a group came together. And at that time, I was running a crisis center for critically, chronically ill children. But there was concern for children who also experienced loss, not just those who were themselves ill. Mm -hmm. And uh, the center was open, then it was very small, eventually grew. And and there was a little house that became the Children's Bereavement Center, and now we're in a 10,000-square-foot home-like building, sort of a, akin to a Ronald McDonald house, I guess you would say. But uh, when you walk in our home, it, it feels and smells like home because dinner is usually cooking every mm, evening, yeah. and the groups meet at night, and we have an array of expressive arts uh, rooms upstairs. So we will have anywhere between... 20 and 35 children in the evening with their families and also on Sunday afternoon. They come here and the children first learn to be able to speak in a, about the loss uh, because many of them just cannot find words. What are you seeing as the major losses? I would say overall we have majority parent loss, although we have a pretty robust uh, sibling group as well. In fact, with our sibling group, we've started using pet therapy with dogs. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the children come here, and it could be after a suicide, a homicide, uh, a chronic illness, or a sudden death. And so we, have, we even have separate evenings for those groups, and we have some mixed groups if you can't make a particular night. But we have found that different types of losses uh, affect children differently. Most of your kids, what age groups are they in? I would say the majority are ages 7 to 14. The group that we call uh, beyond self-harm or suicide, that group is, is unique and very difficult. Often they're struggling with blame and uh, trying to make sense out of it. And many times there's nothing that they could have done, and they certainly aren't at fault. But that is always a, a concern with that group. How do you deal one. with trauma? All of our, our counselors are trained in this area. And I should also add that we have individual counseling, Gloria, in addition to the support groups. So some of the children aren't ready for the groups. We feel that the groups are very good in terms of normalizing and letting the children know that there are others who have experienced it. But many children are not told the cause of death. I think sometimes yeah, that's later. scary for kids when they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, yeah. because their imagination gets the best of them and they're fearful, oh my gosh, I could maybe I could die. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how this person mm -hmm. died. We find that when children are affected by violence, 
they're also they're often fearful uh, of leaving the remaining parent mm. alone or even of being in their own home. Um, with the children who are experiencing chronic illness, we do provide what we call anticipatory support with individual counseling. Many of the children don't want to go to school mm-hmm. because they're afraid of missing uh, you know, a- any moments that they might have with the loved one. So there are lots of emotions, and that's why our center combines individual counseling as well as groups and tries to address the losses. We believe that grieving is a normal experience for the most part, and there is going to be hurt, there'll be tears, there'll be physiological you know, impact, tummy aches, sleeplessness, all of that. But when that exists for... Uh, you know, a period of, say, beyond several weeks when the child can't function in normal life, when the child is afraid, then we really are sure that, you know, something is going on with that child. And that's when they, we know that to prevent more dysfunctional outcomes, we need to lessen the anxiety and reduce the tension and give them a, a comfortable, safe place where they can reduce you know, just reduce their emotional stress and get support. And so we work a lot with creative arts. We have music rooms, art therapy, um, motion. We even have a padded rumpus room where a child can come and punch punching bags and bang their head against the wall. Because, again, we feel as though this is part of of grieving. It's dealing with those pent-up emotions. Um, I like to sometimes think of when children come here, there's a lot of discussion about stages of grief. I like to think in terms of stages of healing. Oh, I like that, don't you, Heidi? Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And And that one of the first steps is to be able to understand and express the loss. A lot of the children don't know what happened or they don't understand what happened. Getting the language at at the developmentally appropriate age is -hmm. is first important to help them understand the death. And then as we move on, we try to extract or listen to the children as they talk about what is it that you loved about your sister who died or your brother who died or mom and dad. What parts of him do you remember the most? That's nice, getting to that uh, less traumatic Mm -hmm. spot. Mm -hmm. And they come into the center and they see the rumpus room and the art room and the music room. First of all, a lot of children feel that they're coming to the bereavement center and they're going to have to cry, and, and that's certainly not what we expect up front. That sometimes happens. But when they get here and see other children and especially if they have a similar type death loss, like the suicide Mm -hmm. or the homicide, then they want to come. As we walk through this memorializing the person you love, we do a lot of art therapy and journaling and picture frames and murals and all kinds of things to remember the good things, the Mm -hmm. good memories. And we also, if you go into our garden here, our backyard, you'll see a playscape. But beyond that, you'll see a big chalkboard, and it's one of about five or 600 around the world. And on the top in big letters, it says, before I die. And then there are places to write. And the children love to write on that. And that's sort of the next stage. So after you understand the death and can verbalize it, after you remember the good things and can memorialize it, Then we go to the next step about what are you going to do with the rest of your life? What hope Mm. do you have? And before I die, I've seen everything on there from I want to open a barber shop, I want to see my mommy happy, I want to go around the world. We do spin art. We talk about colors of emotion, and we'll bring a whole family in to sit around the table. And have, we have crayons there, and they can pick up a crayon and doodle, and we'll launch off from there onto the thought about why did you pick that color, and let's take a color of paint. So I might choose green if I'm envious that all the other kids have moms to go to school or, you know, on parent night, or I might choose blue if I'm just blue and depressed. And each member of the family gets to put some squirts of colored paint in the spinner. And we then spin that and make a, a 
thin art photo, and we tell them this is a picture of their grief. I wanted to uh, talk to you before we end the show about um, your camps because I know if you live in uh, Texas in that area, uh, San Antonio area, you're going to want to go to the bereavement center, but also you can look for other bereavement centers in your area. Cause Log on to the National Alliance of Grieving Children. Just Google the National Alliance of Grieving Children because most of our centers around the country are members of that, and we consider them sister organizations. We refer to each other. Um, it's really a great resource, and they're well run. But I also want to talk about your camp, because can't you come to your camps from all around? Yes, uh, we have openings. We run, uh, we over the past few years, run two camps on site. Our building's about 10,000 square foot, so we literally sleep them here, give them pillow pets and sleeping bags, and it's like a big playhouse to the children. We do that usually spring break and summer. And then this fall, just over the Columbus Day weekend, we had a three-day camp outdoors with healing circles. We did that in conjunction with Seasons Hospice Foundation, and they flew in music therapists, and we took uh, 47 children to this camp. Pretty intense, uh, but wonderful, wonderful. Do you have any scholarships for that? The yeah. camp was actually free. Oh, we fantastic. We uh, were supported by a local Kiwanis organization and Wonderful. generous friends of the center. So there was no cost for our children to be there. You can find us at www.cbcst.org. That stands for Children's Bereavement Center, South Texas.org. All right. Well, Marion, thank you for, so much for being on the show today and, and for all the work you're doing to help uh, children deal with loss. Well, thanks for listening to the show today. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley with Dr. Heidi Horsley, and uh, we want to say if you've lost hope, please lean on ours till you find your own, and God bless. You've been listening to Open to Hope Radio, hosted by Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley. Like today's edition, all of our past programs are available on demand at opentohope.com along with helpful articles, videos, resources, and links to help get you through the toughest time of your life. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Again, that's opentohope.com. Check it out today. Then be sure to stop by next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time when we'll be posting another edition of Open to Hope Radio. Remember, others have been where you are. They made it through, and you can too, as long as you're open to hope.